Hello there. Welcome back to the discussion on the OpenL DAP. I hope you have managed to get some time to watch the 30 odd minute video that was posted around the installation and configuration of OpenL DAP. Uh, installation and configuration was done on my Solaris 11 machine. But having understood the concept of the configuration file, the permission of the data directory as well as uh, uh, bringing up the SLAPD daemon, uh, you should have been in a position to bring up an LDAP server on the operating platform of your choice as well. Like I said, in case if you have trouble bringing this up on your machine, please feel free to ask a question at ask at fedg.com. I would be glad to uh, attend to the issues that you're facing during the installation of the open LDAP. Now, having understood the installation of, of the open LDAP, let's move on. Uh, to discuss about the various operations that you perform on the OpenL DAP. So this discussion, this demonstration is going to be crucial in the sense that we would be discussing about the LDAP search command which is what you would use to perform a search on the data that is stored in the LDAP server. We would also be using the LDAP add command to add more and more of data into the LDAP server. We will also be using the LDAP modify command which is what we use to modify the existing data in the LDAP server. I think it's now very clear to all of us that LDAP is a data store and we are going to operate on this data in the next demonstration. You can see that on my system there I have run the command svcs ldap slash server to verify that the LDAP server is online which is the state that I get when I run that command. I also verified that the daemon uh, SLAPD is running on my system and it is indeed running on my system. If you remember what we discussed in the earlier video that was the installation and the configuration of the open LDAP, we talked about the installation, we talked about making changes to the slapd.conf under the etc open lab directory we also talked about changing the ownership and the permission of the data directory of the open LDAP. and finally we started the open LDAP server and then added certain amount of data into the LDAP server you might want to go back and watch the video in case uh, if there was a gap between watching that video and uh, you have come back to the uh, to this video now uh, so in case if you do not remember you might want to just go back and watch the last part of the video to figure out what was the data that we added but just to give you the pictorial representation of what was finally added into the LDAP server was the first uh, that is the root of my DIT. DIT of course stands for directory information tree the hierarchical tree structure that we talked about in the very first video of open LDAP bootcamp. Uh, if you remember, I added dc is equal to fedg, comma dc is equal to com. That's the root of the DIT on my whiteboard here. Apart from the root or apart from the suffix that I've created on the DIT, there is absolutely nothing in my LDAP server yet. So in this video, I am going to create a branch, probably a couple of branches, and I'm going to add users under those branches that we would be creating. So we're going to get an essence of how we perform a search operation on the LDAP server, how we perform a modify operation on the LDAP server, how we perform an add operation on the LDAP server because it is the add operation which will enable us to add branches below this and then it is the add operation that will enable us to add further users inside, inside those branches as well. So uh, we, we're going to see that uh, uh, working on our system on our LDAP server uh, so this is the this is the only thing that we have on LDAP server now. Uh, by the way, the naming convention I've used for my suffix is DC is equal to fedg comma DC is equal to com. Uh, DC stands for domain component. I need to mention here that the naming convention need not be like this for suffix all the time. Uh, it is okay if you give it as o is equal to fedg.com which is organization is equal to fedg.com there are different standards that you might consider while identifying the appropriate naming convention for the suffix in your site uh, all of this is done in the analysis and design phase of the directory server implementation so you will identify what should be the appropriate term or appropriate naming convention that you would finally decide on uh, for the suffix of your DIT, the directory information tree. I've used a very popular and a convenient suffix name which is dc is equal to fedg, dc is equal to com. So I have the suffix ready with me. 
before I go ahead and add, add branches to it, uh, I want to perform a search operation on my LDAP server. My LDAP server is running as you can see from the output. The command is very simple. It's LDAP search on which host. By the way, if I do not mention the minus H, that is the host option, it is going to search the local host. So I would specify local host just to give you a bit of a clarity on the minus H there. If your LDAP server is a different machine, you would most probably be specifying the IP address of that machine or the host name of the machine if there is a mechanism to resolve the host name with the machine's IP address. So we have the minus H uh, local host. Uh, the default port number is 389, which is where my directory server is listening. Again. If I omit the minus P option, that is also absolutely fine because by default, the LDAP search command would try and uh, contact the directory server running on the port number 389. So it makes sense to use the minus P option only if the minus P is uh, or only if the port of the LDAP server is anything other than 389. But I'm again mentioning this for the sake of clarity. And then I need to mention, of course, some directory servers allow you to perform a search as anonymous users. So you do not have to authenticate yourself as a valid user to search the directory server. A very good example of this is your organization and you want to find out the employees within the organizations. Most of the organizations do not let you do that until you authenticate yourself as an employee of their organization. The org chart is not something publicly available uh, in most of the organizations. I wouldn't say all the organizations, but most, most of the organizations do not let you perform a search on the org chart. Uh, so you will have to identify yourself as a valid user first to perform that search. Of course, that's what we refer to as an authentication in general context. But in directory server, the authentication term is referred to as binding. Binding is the term that we are using in directory server for the authentication. Now the DN that you are use, using for binding operation is what we refer to as a bind DN. The distinguished name that you use in the LDAP search or the LDAP modify command to authenticate yourself, to bind yourself to the directory server is what we refer to as a bind DN. And that is mentioned by using the minus D option. Uh, of course, you remember the top level administrator in my open LDAP is uh, CN is equal to manager, comma DC is equal to FedG, comma DC is equal to com. In case if you do not remember this, we had mentioned this in the slapd.conf file. This happens to be the top level administrator of my directory server. And I can specify the password here. Uh, you might be a bit concerned here to see the password in clear text. It's of course not a recommended option because there might be people watching over your shoulder the clear text password that you are typing in and it's certainly a security risk. But then if you do not specify the password here, it is going to prompt you for a password, which is probably a better option because whatever you type as a password is not going to be uh, displayed onto the uh, terminal. So we have the password there and then I need to mention where do you want to start the search? I mean, it's a, it's a tree, it's a DIT, directory information tree. There are many branches. There is a suffix and below the suffix there are many, many branches. Maybe you are very specific about starting the search at a specific branch. For example, you know in FedG there is a department by the name Finance and the person whom you are searching for is actually in Finance. So I don't want to start my search right to the top of the DIT. I want to start my search exactly at that branch uh, Finance. So in that case, you will specify that branch name here, which is where you want to start the search. And that's what we refer to as a base DN. The DN that you mention, where you want to start the search is what we refer to as a base DN. The DN where you exactly start the search. So I specify the base DN as uh, DC is equal to FedG, comma, DC is equal to com because I do not have any other branch yet. Uh, it's only the suffix that I have. You might recall from the whiteboard diagram that I showed you some time back. That's the only branch that exists. In fact, that's the only suffix that exists there. So I'll start my search right there. And the safest of the option I'm using is object class is equal to star. Now what that means is I'm going to search for all entries in the directory server which has an attribute of object class. That's a very uh, clever way of saying I want to get information about all entries because just about all entries in the directory server has the object class attribute. 
So this is what we call as a presence. If there is a presence of an attribute called object class, object class is equal to asterisk means if there is a presence of the attribute object class in any of the entries, give me that entry. The last one you see there is what we refer to as a search filter. What am I filtering with? I'm filtering the entries based on the presence of an attribute called object class. Show me all the entries in the directory server that has the attribute object class in it. That's what we refer to as object class is equal to star. So let me just hit enter here. You could see that uh, there is only one entry inside my directory server. As you would remember from the whiteboard diagram you observed some time back. I'm performing the search here. I'm performing it on the local host. So that is why minus H local host there. Then I'm performing uh, minus P389. That's the default port. Even if I do not specify that this command is going to go through just fine. I have to authenticate myself to the directory server, which is why I'm specifying a bind DN because binding is what we refer to for authentication in directory server. Then I specify the password using the minus W. If I don't do that, it is going to prompt me for the password. Then I have the minus B option, which is the branch where I would like to start my search. And that's what we refer to as a base DN, the base at which I start my search. And then what am I searching for? I'm searching for all the entries that has an attribute object class, which would actually mean all the entries in the directory server, because all the entries in the directory server indeed has object class is equal to uh, object class attribute there. So I have it ready now. Uh, what do I do? Um, I, I get the result. Uh, maybe if, if I want, I can just show you that if I try to connect to a port uh, different from 389, you could see that I'm getting an error that says, you know, connection refused. As a matter of fact, there is no directory server running on the port number 390. That's exactly the reason why you get to see that error there. And like I also mentioned, I can completely omit uh, these two uh, these two attributes or these two switches with the LDAP search command because by default it is anyway going to connect to the local host and the port number 389 there. So I hope you have understood and again one more uh, variation of this command maybe I would uh, remove the minus W option from here and see what happens. Uh, it is asking me for the password. So I will specify it as secret and you can see that uh, it's giving me the same result. The difference here was the password was not exposed as a clear text there. So I hope you've understood the LDAP search command. So maybe if you've understood, then we can move on to the next segment of this uh, topic, which is actually uh, LDAP add so that we are going to add more and more of, of uh, uh, branches to the existing DIT and then eventually add users to that. So if you are comfortable with this segment, Come to the next segment, please.